Well, hello, everyone. This is John Thomas, and welcome to the call. Um, I'm with Humanities Team, and as Steve just, Steve Farrell just mentioned, we're really excited about this panel. We'll be making some announcements that we'll share with you, and uh, it's, it's been a long and amazing day, um, but it's not over. Um, it's really a pleasure for me to moderate this next panel, New Bottom Line for Business. This should be a powerful and inspiring discussion. I'll be speaking with Ronaldo Brutico, Chris Laszlo, Jennifer McLean, and Thomas Hubel. These are four remarkable people with inspiring perspectives on the topic for this panel. So during the next hour, we'll focus on one of the more important topics of our time, how business can transform and must transform as humanity shifts globally to living in oneness. We'll explore the vision of conscious business and discuss these two exciting announcements made during the summit, the Conscious Business Declaration and the Conscious Business Training and Certification Program. So I'll introduce Ronaldo, Chris, Jennifer, and Thomas to you in just a moment. Um, first, I just want to take a minute and acknowledge um, our listening audience. We have over 60,000 registrations for the summit. So whether you're joining us on the phone or on the webcast, um, possibly listening to a replay, welcome to this uh, to this program. Um, I encourage those of you that are uh, participating to to participate, to add your comments, any questions uh, that you may have, or epiphanies that come to you. You can uh, add these if you're um, you could, to the uh, Global Oneness Summit webpage at the page for this panel. The new bottom line for business panel. There's a there's a window there to do that, um, or you can uh, add these to the um, to the telesummit uh, Q and A window. Uh, I want to suggest for many of you that don't want to take notes uh, or like to have this this content available to you later to share with others, I'd encourage you to purchase one of the Global Oneness Day 2015 upgrade packages. Um, there's a discount being offered right now of $100 off those packages, and you can find those on the Global Oneness Summit.org page. Um, just go to the Upgrade button at the top of the page. Also, suggest you, when you're done that, look at the, the Special Offers button. There's some beautiful programs that are being offered for a limited time as part of this program. So, before we begin our conversation, let me briefly tell you about our amazing four panelists. In the interest of time, I'll be somewhat brief with my introductions. You can find more complete biographies for them um, at the webpage for the new bottom line for business that I mentioned earlier. So let me begin with Ronaldo Brutico. Ronaldo is a successful entrepreneur, executive, author, and futurist, and the founding president of the World Business Academy. Rinaldo has published numerous cutting-edge articles and books that address the role and responsibility of business in relation to the critical moral, environmental, and social concerns of the day. A keynote speaker at business schools and conferences for over 25 years, Rinaldo is well, widely recognized as a practical visionary, change agent, and futurist. Rinaldo is president of the Chopra Foundation, Chairman of the Unstoppable Foundation, and serves on the board of the Just Capital Foundation. He serves on the board of directors of Men's Warehouse and has served on numerous nonprofit boards, including the Gorbachev Foundation. Dr. Chris Laszlo is Professor of Organizational Behavior at Case Western Reserve University's Weatherhead School of Management where he is the Faculty Director for Research and Outreach at the Fowler Center for Business as an agent, for, as an agent of world benefit. He is the author of Flourishing Enterprise, The New Spirit of Business, published in 2014, and several other books, Embedded Sustainability, Sustainable Value, and The Sustainable Company. His work over the past decade has helped launch mainstream management approaches to sustainability for value and profit. Chris has received great recognition for his work, and again, this is summarized in his bio on the on the panel webpage. It's also been a pleasure to work 
with Chris, um, who is one of the collaborators in the drafting of the Conscious Business Declaration, which we'll discuss shortly. Jennifer McLean is an internationally acclaimed healer, entrepreneur, author, speaker, cultural creative, and trendsetter. She is a force and leader in the human potential personal growth movement. Jennifer has also been the producer of Healing with the Masters, which is one of the world's largest online teleseminar series that attracts a global audience of 500,000. Now in its 12th season, this teleseminar series reaches an international subscriber base across 200 countries. Jennifer is a recognized healer, trained in many modalities, and the creator of the body design system, an innovative technique that helps individuals shift energy uh, in their body to successfully liberate themselves from various uh, ailments and heartaches. Thomas Hubel is an internationally recognized spiritual guide. As a medical student in his mid-20s, Thomas followed his strong inner calling, abandoned his studies, and spent the next four years in a retreat in the Czech Republic. During this time, he explored the spaces of inner consciousness, and experienced a fundamental opening. After returning to Vienna, he started offering one-to-one sessions, which grew to larger audiences and workshops. And since 2004, Thomas has been active worldwide, leading workshops large and large events, such as the Celebrate Life event, and his, his um, healing events, which have brought together thousands of Germans and Israelis to heal the cultural shadow of the Holocaust. And just on a personal note, having watched Thomas work with audiences, I, I appreciate his keen insight and guilt gift for helping people uh, free themselves of restrictive conditioning. And, and he also has a very good, very insightful um, perspective on organizations and collective fields. So I think that'll be a valuable part of our discussion as well. So, um, let's um, let's get started. I, again, I just would reiterate: there's more information about these, the panel that's on the page, and um, it's really an honor for me to be with with all four of you on this panel. And uh, this has been a regular panel on Global One this day. Uh, I'm excited to have the opportunity to moderate this conversation again. Uh, Ronaldo, thank you for participating again. And thank you, Chris, Jennifer, and Thomas for joining this conversation with us for the first time. So I'd like to um, begin by um, just kind of to open the conversation. I uh, would love it if the four of you could each share why this panel is interesting to you. Why did you agree to show up and be part of this? Because um, as business leaders, as spiritual leaders, as visionaries, um, you each bring a unique perspective and a unique motivation. So what excites you about this conversation and what's so important about business in relation to this new paradigm of oneness? And I just open this to whoever would like to speak first. Otherwise, I'll appoint one of you. <laughs> I'm I'm happy to jump in, uh, John. This is uh, Chris Lanclo. Sure. Hey. And uh, first, let me just say uh, how delighted and honored I am to be part of this panel and and the Global Oneness Day and its its uh, community convened by uh, the humanities team. So. Um, you know, I was thinking about this panel and the panel topic, and I, I think what is most exciting for me is uh, seeing the emergence of really a new form of enterprise that often is, is called business as a force for good, um, business as an agent of world benefit, or flourishing enterprise, or, or similar terms. And what's exciting about it is that its hallmark is not only reducing social harm or minimizing uh, an ecological footprint, which I think is, has been the focus of a lot of corporate sustainability 
in the past years and decades, and we're starting to see that that's just not to where we want to go. And instead, this idea of being a positive agent, having a net positive impact, which is you know, well articulated in the second principle of the conscious uh, business declaration, which, which uh, I know, John, you're going to talk more about, um, is about, uh, but that principle articulates this idea about um, increasing economic prosperity while contributing to a healthy environment and improving our well-being. So this is a, a completely different kind of organization from business as usual. You know, it's, it's what my colleague David Cooper Ryder calls a positive institution acting for business and world benefit. So it has a different purpose. You know, it's not maximizing shareholder returns, but manifesting wholeness and oneness. And it has different organizing principles as well. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll stop here and uh, can, can resume as needed. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. This is Jennifer and, uh, McLean. Um, hi, Jennifer. Hi, thanks for <laughs> – I thought I'd jump in. Yes. You know, um, I um, think that one of the most crushing um, things on our planet has been um, capitalism. And part of the reason I wanted to come on this panel was to have a discussion on how we can reframe what capitalism is, as Chris has been sharing so profoundly, and not only moving from a, a place of what business can be, but what we can be in business. So one of the things I'm, uh, I focus on a lot in business, and my bio didn't really share too much. Um, you guys have a bit of an old bio, but I, I'm now spending most a lot of my time in business. Um, I actually worked in corporate America as a business strategist for 25 years, specializing in startups in the tech industry. I went through the whole tech bust and boom. I, I actually helped to launch Yahoo Canada, launched the entire USB, plat USB flash drive platform. And in that time, I got crushed. <laughs> and when I started mm. my own business, which was Healing with the Masters, I started to see a new way of being in business, being. And what I discovered is that um, there's a way to bring your heart into your business. And when you do, all the rest of it gets taken care of because it brings consciousness to the entire flow of what's possible. We start to move into what I call resa giving, where we are receiving as we are giving. And that business becomes one of service. Um, and um, the environment becomes part of that conversation. Um, uh, philanthropy becomes part of that conversation, but the, uh, the core of the conversation starts from each individual's heart. And, then, um, and to me, that's what business is becoming now, that there's an opportunity to move from the heart and the employees even. But it becomes a movement, no longer a business that with, with profit margins, although that's still part of it. But the profit margins now become, look at the profits are, are all the people we've assisted. Every dime in my corporate bank account represents someone I've served. And it's not just me that's doing it, and I'm using it as an example. And to, have, to come here and have this conversation on, on Global Oneness Day, <laughs> to me just, it sparked me. And I'm so honored and delighted to be here to talk about um, what I think can be one of the most profound uh, changes we can do on this planet is to change entrepreneurs and business owners to move from a different paradigm of oneness. Well, thank you, Jennifer. And just was reflecting, I, I was working at Intel around that time you were in Silicon Valley doing your yeah. work, so <laughs> so I can definitely relate. You remember? To what you shared. <laughs> yes, I remember. And also, yeah. yes, and also re relate very strongly with my journey in business or well, what you just described is moving from that shifting to moving from that place in the heart. So, um, excellent. So, um, Thomas or Ronaldo, either want to go next? Sure, I, 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 I can go next. Okay. okay. Are you Ronaldo. speaking, Thomas? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, you know, I, um, I, I actually shared the uh, that period of time in Silicon Valley with you, Jennifer and uh, John. I was uh, from '74 uh, for about 20 some years. I was in in Silicon Valley, and I used to belong to the thing called the Boys Club, even though there were two girls in it. Where we would come up with all these crazy <laughs> ideas that um, we would, you know, and we would get taken to dinner anywhere we wanted to go by Nasdaq, 
and they would in the Silicon Valley Bank just so they could come and not take notes, but hang out to hear what the buzz would be for the, the next six months of what would happen. And when we had those meetings, we envisioned an amazing world. And I and I don't recall in any one of them ever hearing somebody tell me that what really got them up in the morning was the hope that they would be a billionaire. In time, going to Silicon Valley did attract people who wanted to be very, very wealthy. But entrepreneurs, and, and, and the original phalanx of tech entrepreneurs, had in common, I think, an element which is key to any good entrepreneur, and that is the belief that you want to create something of value, and that's what drives you. Uh, my dear friend Bob Schwartz at Terrytown used to say that in all the years he taught the entrepreneur school, he never met one good entrepreneur who was motivated more by money than by ideas. And so I think it's, a, it's an extraordinary privilege to be back again this year, John, on this call, because what the call is about is the essence of oneness and how, I believe, business has become estranged from its tap roots. And therefore, it is not functioning in a healthy, but rather an aberrational nature with respect to society. And if you want to see what that unhealthy, aberrational nature looks like, climate change is one description. So I, I really am glad we're talking today because oneness is the essential element that is driving all of us in business and out of business to recognize that we are on one small, beautiful blue marble hurling through space, as Bucky would say. And in this spaceship of Earth, we are able, with the tools of business, to actually recreate the future as we would choose it to be, not as we would be willing to tolerate merely for the pursuit of quarter-to-quarter -quarter profits. So I'm, I'm really glad to be as part of the conversation because what I've learned in the last 40 years in business is that you make more money and you do better. And frankly, you have a richer spiritual bank account if you look at how you can contribute back to society rather than look at how you can extract. So it's time for business to stop seeing itself as a predator and begin to see itself as a steward. And hopefully this conversation about oneness will lead us to that conclusion. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you, Ronaldo. And as you were talking, I was just reflecting on how much has changed since last year when we had spoke on this topic on the same day. And uh, there's definitely a key change underway, which we will we'll come back to. Um, even even the Pope calling out <laughs> the the uh, our entire um, business uh, culture and economy to to change our ways. So it's, it's a lot changed. Um, but um, Thomas, if you could share your um, your interest in this whole topic. Yes, thank you, John. Um, I mean, I pretty much resonate with many things that have been said already, and um, I think my interest is um, how to apply what I have learned and seen in studying consciousness and the development of consciousness. Um, in the in this what I call marketplace or in the in the design of culture, because sometimes like spiritual knowledge or spiritual practice is being seen or viewed as this cloudy, a bit um, esoteric cloud up there, but basically that the that the mystical knowledge of thousands of years and the and the kind of revelations and integrated revelations actually need to prove need to be proven in society as uh, how in the way how we build culture and so I'm very much interested how the, the the awakenings of consciousness the development of consciousness are really taking place in our everyday life and how we walk our talk and I believe I many of my uh, students are basically um studying, but only some of them are studying and bringing all their studies um, openly into the business world. And um, some of them do, and some of them say, listen, I cannot talk about everything that I'm doing here with my boss, with my in my companies. And I think it's time that we, that we will change that, that our workplaces will reflect uh, the same consciousness as does our meditation retreat and does do our other retreats. So I think it's worth working for that, and I believe that's also what's being reflected in um, the statements that you sent out, and so that's why I'm here. 
Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, thanks, Thomas, and really all of you for your perspectives. And what's drawing you here is um, so many common denominators than what I was hearing. And I um, would love to um, to um, jumping off what I just mentioned to Ronaldo a moment ago, just how much has changed since last year and this sea change I feel going on. Um, there has um, been an exciting time uh, for uh, lots of um, new relationships and new um, institutional movements in this direction of conscious business, which are quite numerous for us to, to name. But one that I think is fairly central to what's happening here today in the Global Oneness Day, we announced this uh, Conscious Business Declaration. And I'll, I would love to chat a little bit about that because uh, I to set up our next question. And I think it's worth, it's a short enough declaration I was going to to read it uh, as well. But um, so the Conscious Business Declaration was created by Humanities Team with Club of Budapest, Goyd Peace Foundation, and Fowler Center for Business as an Agent of World Benefit. And the declaration aims to define a new standard for what it means to be a business in the 21st century. And it does that through seven principles, which we'll discuss in a, in a moment. And uh, like any standard or any new template that's offered in, in the business community, uh, we believe that there also needs to be training and what are the best practices, what's the best uh, knowledge and also inspiration to help those leaders who step up and commit to this this kind of a transformation. So um, but we'll, we won't talk so much about the training program. I may come back to that later, but would love to, for the benefit of the audience especially, uh, and those that have not read this declaration, to to read it. And as I read it, I would encourage all of us and and the, and the audience as well. As you hear each one of these points um, reflect, you know, what would it mean for us as individuals, as leaders, as people who work at various levels in organizations, what would it mean to fully commit ourselves to this journey, to the journey of developing the awareness and the skills needed to consciously evolve our organization in alignment with these principles? And um, I'll just quickly read the declaration and, and reflect on that, if you will, as I read them, and then we'll come back and have a little discussion about this. But the declaration reads, as a global community of conscious business leaders, we recognize that, one, we are one with humanity and all of life. Business and all institutions of the human community are integral parts of a single reality, interrelated, interconnected, and interdependent. Two, and this is the point that... Uh, Chris mentioned a moment ago. In line with this reality, the purpose of business is to increase economic prosperity while contributing to a healthy environment and improving human well-being. Three, business must go beyond sustainability in the philosophy of do no harm to restoring the self-renewing integrity of the earth. Four, Integrity requires that business operate with complete economic, social, and financial transparency. Five, a business, excuse me, a successful business behaves as a positive and proactive member of the local and global communities in which it operates. Six, a business that sees, honors, and celebrates the essential interconnected nature of all human beings and all life maximizes human potential, and helps create a world that works for all. And seven, when aligned with oneness, business is the most powerful engine on earth for creating prosperity and flourishing for all. So there's a lot, uh, a lot of <laughs> powerful points in, in that declaration. And um, I wanted to uh, now, I invite a discussion uh, around this, and certainly the again the intent for the the organizations that created this declaration 
was to set and create a new standard for what it means to be a business in the 21st century. And I'd like to ask each of you on the panel to share, do, you know, your, your honest assessment. Do we need these principles? Are they relevant or useful in the world at this time? What would a future look like without these principles or declaration of this type? And, um, yeah, let me, let, let me open that to, uh, anyone who feels inspired to start. I'll, Chris, maybe I'll, maybe I'll throw the ball at you first, since you've had some involvement with the, with the declaration. Do you, do you want to sure. start the conversation and then we can, I'm happy we'll to. I'm, I, I was okay. feeling, I, I was feeling very inspired, but wanting to be polite as well. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, um, why do we need these principles? Um, what would our future look like without them? Um, or, or, or uh, declar uh, declaration of this type. Well, you know, for me, uh, these principles are an essential guide, really, to what Ken Wilber referred to in his earlier keynote as growing up in our consciousness. In this case, um, the growing up of consciousness in business. So I think what they uh, help us with is to evolve the story of business from one, you know, that's you know, classically around creating shareholder value at often at any cost to society, to one that is aiming uh, is aimed at creating prosperity and flourishing for all, as the seventh principle says. And ultimately, you know, the purpose of business becomes to manifest the new consciousness of oneness in everything it does. And I think this is a very subtle point that um, this oneness paradigm is starting to surface that. Um, Ken Wilber has emphasized uh, that Frederick Laloux has talked about also that it's really out of the new consciousness of oneness that a new form of organization um, it arises. Um, it's also, I think these principles help um, uh, with this idea of being seeing itself as part of one global family as as my father, Irvin Laszlo, said on the uh, earlier panel. So I think, you know, without these principles, uh, the problem is no matter how analytic, financial, good job we do with trying to justify uh, sustainability actions in business, we're locked in this consciousness of utility maximization, of selfishness, of competition, of you know, some of the other paradigms that have been discussed throughout the day. Um, and if, if our consciousness remains w one of selfishness and separateness, then we may make a lot of progress in terms of, you know, the, the practical things of energy conservation, waste reduction, and um, reducing social harm. But to really make that switch to operating from a place of oneness and in service of prosperity and flourishing, um, we need to have a consciousness of connectedness and compassion. And, and I see these seven principles as being guideposts to that new paradigm. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. No, John, and, uh, John, I... Yes, go yeah, ahead, Ronaldo. Yeah, I was going to throw in here. First of all... Um, I, I didn't have the privilege of working on this draft, although I wish I had because I think it's absolutely fantastic, and I, as you know, I've wholeheartedly endorsed it. Um, and, and one of the reasons I like it so much is since we started the Academy in 1986, these are the principles that have motivated everything we've done. At that time, it was not a commonly – it was a hard conversation to have with people to talk about business as having a higher purpose than quarter-to-quarter -quarter pursuit of profits. It was harder to talk about the fact that the capital market system, which this country uses and the Western world uses, has been become distorted by uh, forces that were not marketplace forces but political forces. So it's, it's been a very long time that this conversation has been percolating up. I'm, I'm pleased to say that it's increasingly becoming a common conversation. 
Uh, I don't know if any of your listeners uh, saw the piece that uh, Paul Pullman, the CEO of Unilever, released just a few weeks ago, uh, basically speaking to the oneness of, of business and society. But I, I want to talk about just one. I want to focus on one of these seven principles, all seven I completely endorse, and that's the, that's the third one. Um, we've got to go beyond do no harm. You asked in your opening question, uh, we have to ask what business can transform it. In fact, you said must transform itself, and I want to underscore that. I think business, as the most powerful institution on the planet by far, absolutely must now rise to the occasion of global reconstruction. We have made such an incredible mess as human civilization of this planet and of every and of our subspecies on the planet. And I'm, I'm, I'm calling for all of us to recognize, the people on this call probably already know it, so it's not new information to any of us. But I'm really saying for the, the business community to understand where its own economic best interests lie, clearly it is in the task of enormous proportions called global reconstruction. We've, we've been writing and talking about this at the Academy for over a decade. And what I'd like to do is start enlisting people in the, in the dialogue that business not only can transform, business absolutely must transform, as you said in your opening remark. And what I would hope would come of today's conversation would be a continuing way for us to broaden the scope of the people who are not only willing to participate in this conversation, but broaden the scope of people who are willing to demand that that's where they want to do their commerce. You know, if people would put their money where their deep values were, business would turn on a dime. And since business is so powerful, we, the citizens of planet Earth, we must now demand of our business institutions that they become an agent for global betterment, reconstruction, and oneness thinking. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. It's, I can't uh, – yeah, just everything you say, I resonate so strongly with, Ronaldo. And also, one, of the, one thing I did mention, I, I should have, is, is that the, you know, the drafting of this declaration record is came out of an evolutionary dialogue that's been going on a long time, and we really are standing on the shoulders of the work and organizations like World Business Academy um, uh, and and many others that have done the the spade work for decades, and also on the spiritual side, um, those that have been calling for this unity vision. For, for decades, um, and some of the ones that were mentioned, um, Irvin Laszlo and Ken Wilbur and the talks they gave at this conference. So I think what's, what I think is maybe kind of unique at this point in time is that the recognition of putting that these streams are now converging, that spiritual evolutionary transformation, business transformation, we're all in the same boat together. And so thank you. I could, I don't want to, talk more, though. I'd really love to hear from Jennifer and Thomas your, your thoughts. Yeah, maybe I'll jump in now. Um, I think, first of all, even if you just take uh, the first principle, and if you really allow not just the words, but the meaning of the words, uh, oneness and interrelatedness of everything in so it actually means two things. It, it heals the dualism of the human and the planet. Because sometimes it comes across like as if the humans on the planet. And um, my understanding is more that if, we, if interrelatedness and interconnectedness is really true, so then the human being is an expression of the planet. And so there is already, like in our thinking, sometimes a dualism between those two. And... Um, and the other, I think it's, the English language has a beautiful word. It comes with, it, it says responsibility. So the, I like this word, the ability to respond. So mm. do we really have the ability to respond to our life circumstances in, in an appropriate way or according to our highest intelligence? And, and I think this, uh, these principles call us, again, because there's a division between a human being and business, but basically if you look into businesses, they, they consist out of human beings. So are we able to respond to 
to all the aspects of doing business, which is the people that I work with, which is the culture around me, which is the planet around me, which is the bigger system around me, am I able to respond to that? And my sense is that technology and the driving force of businesses have made the, the whole globe into a global brain. So we are actually sitting in each other's living room and just this conversation is uh, like is a proof of it. So now are we able to respond to the fact that our own technology and business uh, endeavors actually brought us together into this global living room? And are we able to respond to whatever we see? Because basically we have access to all the information. And so I think this, this puts us, as you call it, into an evolutionary development, and not only development, I would call it even an evolutionary pressure that's, that's building up more and more that human consciousness needs to, in a way, uh, meet. And I think that's a very exciting time. And, and as we heard from many other statements already, that there is a, um, if we meet that uh, kind of evolutionary pressure with with an opening of the heart or with the care, so if that's the effect of it, I think we are on the right track. And and my sense is also that that's that what's needed is people who are willing to step into the discomfort of being a pioneer. That innovation might trigger like a lot of fears, because if we step out of the regular habits, there is always a kind of a destabilization that comes with it. But um, my sense is if we have enough pioneers that walk that path of, of the principles that you read, I think that's, that's the exciting uh, aspect that I see at the moment. How many will really take this forward into the world? Beautiful. Yeah, thank you for that, Thomas. And um, that, I think, a real ref uh, a reflection we've been having with the launch of the declaration is really um, we will reach out and hope that the most progressive, uh, visionary um, leaders of large organizations, small organizations, will step forward and sign because that's how we'll, we hope to build this community. And it, and it will take the the pioneers, those that are not um, afraid to endorse something that would be considered radical by today's standards, but um, maybe in the near future would, we'll be considering just, of course, why wouldn't we <laughs> endorse it? So we need the pioneers. So thank you very much. And Jennifer, your, your thoughts uh, yeah, on, on thank uh, you. Um, <clears throat> it's a it's a, a beautiful thing. In fact, one of the things that um, changed my life is when I declared um, who I was. Um, what I declared, what I was doing, it changed everything. And what I encourage the entrepreneurs that I coach is um, is to create a declaration. So, this starting from a declaration makes me very happy. <laughs> and. The declaration right. that you've created, um, because what it does is it starts to creating a declara declaration. Just that alone um, creates a, an energy that um, that people can hang on to, that people are attracted to, and that energy um, in itself can create change. The the other thing that that um, you know I just enjoyed so much hearing the the wonderful insights of the other panelists and. And I got to have a little internal happy dance that we're having a conversation like this about business. So <laughs> what I love is that um, things like that happen um, in life and in business, right? We get these moments of distraction. And just as that happened, right? Uh, you know, it's like we're saying hello to a blank, blank wall. Mm -hmm. um, the opportunity now is for us to use those opportunities <laughs> now and, and not think that something's wrong or amiss. Um, you know, one of the, the, the things that I'm, I'm teaching through my healing work, my, my work with my um, business coaching programs is about bringing healing into the coaching of business owners. And um, I think some of the pioneers that we can encourage today is not just the CEO. Um, you know, as, as, um, as Thomas was sharing, um, the willingness to step into discomfort is, 
is a, a courageous act. And sometimes um, the, the pioneers of this world, they are looking for people that can support them in that courageous act. So I think the declaration is not only for the CEOs of this world, but for the coaches, the CEO coaches, for the um, people that are coming into corporate America to support them and moving into a new dialogue of healing. Because as Thomas was sharing, um, every single person who runs a business is a personality with all their crap that they've been carrying around from their past traumas. And when we can um, assist them in uh, getting a hold of that and changing the dynamic of how they see their world and have more trust and faith in the process of life and business as a spiritual enterprise, as a uh, not just spiritual, but um, but a, a holistic enterprise and that everything's actually okay, um, that we can actually start to gather in a new way uh, through business. Um, so I think that there's an opportunity to use this declaration to go even deeper and to hand mm-hmm. it to the to the employees, hand it to the um, hand it to the coaches of employees and the HR departments. Well, HR departments are usually the ones that are um, most need healing. <laughs> Poor soul, mm-hmm. um, they're kind of stuck in the middle. But nonetheless, um, I think there's an opportunity to create an evolution from within um, using some something as powerful as a declaration as this. And and I so enjoyed uh, what Ronaldo or was it Chris that shared. I couldn't remember. I'm sorry, whichever one was, but the the notion of um, being brave with your your where you invest your your income. You know, I mean, we the the dollar, the almighty dollar at this moment can change everything truly. And if we as a as a mm-hmm. as a consumer force can change where we spend our money and where we're willing to contribute that money um, into companies and into ideas even that are are working from these kinds of declarations. Um, it could it could change tomorrow. It could change tomorrow. I mean, for God's sake, Campbell's is making organic soup. My God, mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that alone shows mm-hmm. you that our money can make a difference, right? So um, I'm I'm very buoyed up by this declaration and by the um, just the general discussion here, and um, and I would encourage all of us to share this declaration. Um, among ourselves, share it on Facebook, share it because um, it doesn't just have to be the pioneers of uh, of leadership. It can be the pioneers of you know the millennials are a very strong community that could take this and really run with it. Yes, thank you, Jennifer. And I, I also wanted to, to underscore what you were just saying because the declaration and the training program that we um, will follow, we're gearing to change agents. And whether that, that can be an executive, that can be a coach, consultant, it could be an entrepreneur, it can be an intrapreneur. Like my journey when I was at Intel, I, I saw the greatest transformation. The CEOs are, are not likely to make those first steps in many companies. It's the middle management that go out on a limb and say, we need to do this. And so I just want to honor what you were saying with that. Um, very much agree. Um, well, uh, John, John, can I put a, a yes. quick plug in here? Yeah, I just thank sure, you for, Jennifer, for picking up on that idea of in, in putting your money where your values are. Um, one of the things I'd like to alert the audience, because we have 60,000 people listening, uh, so we just announced a few weeks ago that the Just Capital had finalized its research protocols, and within the next 12 months, we'll rank the 1,000 largest companies in America on what we believe meaning the public believes, are just criteria for business. This is a huge undertaking. And uh, I want to urge everyone to go look up just, J-U-S-T, capital, uh, dot org, and take a look at who's doing it, what's behind it. I've been privileged to serve on the executive committee of the board as we formed it for the last two years. It's now going public. You'll see a wonderful, an absolutely wonderful TED Talk by our chairman, Paul Tudor Jones. Uh, and, and I just want to urge people that we can make an enormous difference as consumers if we really embrace the idea of oneness. You know, um, mm-hmm. I've been I've been in the in the, in the clothing industry for many years, and we uh, fortunately were the first company in America to adopt uh, universal uh, mandatory audit sta- standards for every factory we do business with in the world, and we've had that now for 14 years. And we did that not because we were afraid get, we would get caught. We did that because it was proactively the right thing to do, which is precisely what this declaration is about. 
And, and the company that we did that in Men's Warehouse has been remarkably, outstandingly successful all these years because it pursued that. Well, I'd like mm-hmm. to get more support from people, not just for that company, but for every company that does well on the Just Index when we release it. Please take note of that and put your money where your values are. You'll be amazed at how quick other companies will come around and go, okay, we get it. It's time to be one. You know, there's, there's, mm-hmm. I, I think that That's is beautiful. so exciting. I, I want to support that. So um, I'm definitely going there to support, and, and I will share it among my entrepreneur audience to, to um, uh, and, and among my uh, larger audience for Healing with the Masters. I'm really excited about that. You know, there's one other thought I had, which is um, I, was, I spent some time down in South America in the Amazon rainforest. In fact, I was about 400 miles from a road. I got to hang out with the indigenous people. Uh, with the Pachamama organization, and um, it was a profoundly life-changing experience. And one of the things, uh, we got to meet um, in person with the Minister of Happiness, which is part of the government. And they are now, me- Ecuador is now measuring their GDP. Uh, instead of GDP, they're measuring happiness. And um, I, I, it, it struck me as so profound that um, it would change the whole dynamic of, of the world if we started measuring happiness instead of money. And um, and what we produce, you know, uh, and it struck mm-hmm. me that 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 would be an interesting thing to incorporate. And it's probably too late for the declaration, but for all of us to incorporate as we're running our companies is, um, you know, the first measure of profit is the profit of happiness. How's the team mm-hmm. doing? How are our customers doing? Are we happy? Okay. Yeah. So my for, yeah. from my perspective, mm-hmm. measuring happiness, I think, could be a a new way for all of us in our businesses. Uh, to, at, from my perspective, also measuring happiness creates uh, this beautiful energy that allows profit to actually increase. Um, and uh, anyway, just a thought. <laughs> yeah, no, it's beautiful thoughts. I just uh, honor so much what we're hearing. I'm also um, mindful we're getting towards the end of the panel, and there's um, uh, one topic I, I hope we could spend a little time on before we, we run out of time. And I think we've just articulated many powerful reasons why a declaration of this type, these kinds of principles are, it's time. It's really part of uh, uh, the evolutionary pressure uh, response to that evolutionary pressure that Thomas had mentioned. What I'd love to ask you all to, to comment on is um, we, and I may ask if, if we have to be brief to get uh, all inputs in on this, but the, the nature of business, or I should say, in this oneness culture, we, we have a really good dialogue and much understanding around how does an individual transform. There's been much, there's actually been millennia of work on that in wisdom traditions and so forth. Transforming organizations to the way the declaration is is calling is a ch- uh, challenge. This is, uh, we would expect this is not a, something any leader is going to do overnight. It's a journey for them to develop themselves as well and people in business to develop. So my, my question is, how do we do that? How does transformation happen within business when we're dealing with a, a collective field of consciousness and there are spiritual principles that can be applied to an organization in a comparable way that they're applied to an individual. And I'm, I'm tempted, I would like to start with you, Thomas, if you don't mind, just because you've shared some very, I think some very relevant points on this, and then would love to open it up. Yes, of course. Um, thank you. The, first of all, my sense is that, as I said before, we are, like, time's up, that we are, we are not anymore just individuals. You know, we, we needed to become individuals, but we are in a time that the whole world ended up on our mobile phone, so that's the end of being just an individual. And my sense is this question starts with how much do I actually know that I am part of a field? So if I walk every day into my company or workplace and I'm there basically as, as this separate entity, so then I, I can, you know, be part of what's needed to do my work, but I, I won't necessarily share like a field. So a field is already like something that is um, 
like a conscious recognition of me being larger than just my body. And so one step to transform a whole culture is, and, and also the beauty of it is to recognize that intersubjectivity is really important. And that communication is not anymore only what I want to say, but I think leading edge, the leading edge of communication is that I know what I want to say, that I am aware and mindful of the space between us, that that's not just air, and that I am aware and mindful of what you are hearing. So if I, if I say that communication is actually that I'm aware of the whole intersubjective space that includes me and you and me and the group, me and my company, me and my international uh, kind of corporation, so then it's actually the question, I like this image of a, of a moon when the moon reflects itself in in the water, in a romantic uh, summer night in the lake, and the lake, the water is still, so you see the reflection of the moon um, very clearly. My sense is that intimacy is that, if you arise like the moon in me. So this has two components. Am I able to host my reality as clearly as possible inside myself? which creates compassion, which creates clarity, which creates care, and so on and so on. And so am I, how much am I able to walk into my company and already host it within myself as clearly as I can? And also, not only my company as the people who work there, but everybody, all the customers and everybody who is connected to it. So that's actually where spiritual practice and uh, business leader practice already merge. And then, um, so if, if I, I need to be initiated in a way into the fact that we are growing as a company and that, that we will be able to share this intersubjectivity and learn to be awake in it. And I think that's what I see in the time of Internet and the time of the global external brain. We are, as individuals, but also as individuals that have so much access to information, we are being called to be part of the world stage. It's actually, we are living in a time where that's one of our life purposes as people who live right now in that time. And I think that creates an enormous pressure, and we see that in the burnout rate and in whatever. But we also have an amazing chance to really make a leap forward that I am not just, you know, ending with the boundaries of my body. And I think that's a very exciting uh, vision. Beautiful. Thank you, Thomas. That's certainly one component. of It's uh, more companies are starting to... Um, introduce things like mindfulness programs and um, which uh, I, I experienced uh, while at Intel we were doing that and I see many companies like Wisdom 2.0 is an amazing conference for that that shows so much is happening but I, I know we're um, have a few more minutes I, I uh, thank you so much for that perspective so that what you're pointing to is fundamental changes in the way the, the the inner experience of how someone stands in relation to their peers in the field that they're in, being conscious of that. And it's a very powerful uh, part of the, the transformation. Um, would anyone else uh, like to offer a few thoughts? And uh, we may only have time for another person here uh, before we wrap well, up. I, anyone feel? Oh, mm -hmm. I, can be, yeah. I can be very short, so maybe we can sure. actually get two. Um, sure. I just want to say that... Um, uh, there's a big project, a research project at the Fowler Center for Businesses and Age of the World Benefit that is exploring these very ideas that Thomas Hubel just described for us. So we have uh, a, a good deal of funding to do field research in the next three years on the relationship between spiritual practices or mindfulness practices and consciousness of connectedness and how that leads to leadership behaviors that produce outcomes of prosperity and flourishing. Um, the, the website for it is uh, 
quantumleadership.org. And uh, there's much more information about it there, but we're certainly uh, we're very excited about the project and looking for uh, partners and, and resources and so on. So that's quantumleadership.org. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Is there time for me to just share something quickly, or did we? Yes, yes. We have a, okay, cool. a couple more minutes. So Thank I, you, Jennifer. I would just be so um, delighted if um, – if we allowed everyone in our companies and in our communities and in our customer base to take responsibility for moving into a paradigm of healing within their own lives. Um, and so um, I, I think what my, my sense is and what I'm witnessing over and over again is that um, when individuals make that choice to take responsibility as um, the ability to respond as Thomas was speaking about earlier, there is a marked change in the environment around them. Um, we actually put on an event um, uh, every, a couple times a year that's free um, that we invite uh, healers. We usually get a couple of hundred people joining us. We invite uh, entrepreneurs to just come and heal. That's it. We do three days of healing for, yeah. for entrepreneurs. And uh, yeah, those, I encourage those kinds of events. I encourage people to... Uh, you know, in, in corporate America to allow their folks to just feel what they're feeling, that there's no mistakes, and that we can move thank in a you. new paradigm of organization. Sorry, I'm going too long. Sorry. No, thank you. And I, I do have to wrap up. I'm sorry, sorry, Ronaldo, we couldn't get to you on this one. But I will say that um, I hope that everyone on this panel and uh, many in this community that we're talking about will will join us in this training program that we hope to launch because we're really, it's about creating a community. So all these activities like the one that Chris just mentioned, what you just mentioned, Jennifer, that we can amplify that as part of the community that we build around this declaration. Um, I have to, I want to thank all of you uh, immensely. It's a huge honor to be on this call with you. And I just want to tell the folks listening that up next, don't miss the Caring for Our Earth panel which should be um, very, very inspiring with um, a number of great panelists, including Andrew Harvey, James O'Day, Roman Hannes, um, and Shoti Zachat uh, uh, Martinez. So I encourage you to join that panel, and we're at a close. Thank you so much for joining, and um, stay tuned for the next panel. <laughs>